Social Security $1,400 fourth stimulus check, specifically focused on retirement, disability, SSDI, survivors, SSI, VA, RRB, low income, no income, seniors, older adults, and of course, people with disabilities. I have all the details and what you need to know right here in the video, so let's get right into it. All right, now first off, I'm making this video because I continue to get this question down below in the comment section a lot from many people here in the community wondering on the latest details on a fourth stimulus check. What is the likelihood of getting one? What are all the details? Where do we currently stand in the event of getting one? Who would be eligible? As well as all the other details that I do want to focus on here in this video. So let's get into it and discuss what's going on. And then of course, also addressing all those concerns from many of you right here in the community. However, really fast before we do, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, please make sure to subscribe by hitting the button right down below the video as it's totally free to do so and because I am your one and only daily advocate, I'm here for you right by your side each and every day as that is my dedication, my commitment, and my promise to you and everybody right here in the community to be here and to watch all this new information hitting the wire as it's a very busy, confusing, and uncertain time that we're currently living through. Things are changing very rapidly. We're getting new bills, packages, and proposals out of Congress literally every single week. We're getting new announcements out literally every single day. A lot of things are changing rapidly and again, I want to break it all down for you so you can see how all of this is going to impact you, your money, your benefits, your lifestyle, your bank account, and of course, anything showing up right now, we can possibly grab and or take advantage of. So again, I'm here for you in any way that I can be. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, so you don't miss any videos going forward. And let's get into it and discuss all the details, answering your questions and concerns, and where we currently stand on a fourth stimulus check in the amount of $1,400. All right, so before we get into this any further, like I said, I'm making this because I literally get this question tons and tons of times down below in the comment section, and I wanna keep, uh, continue to keep you updated because things continue to change, like I said, so much right now. And again, in this video, I do wanna point out a few different things that I'm watching very, very closely right now because it's a very weird year so far, right? We still are relatively early in 2023. There's a lot of this year to go, and it's already been a very weird year so far. And according to what a lot of people are suggesting, the fireworks are going to start later on this year when it comes down to the economy. We'll see what actually happens, but again, I will talk about that more here in just a couple minutes. Also, I wanna throw this, uh, throw this out there. I think we're all on the same page with this, but again, I wanna make this very clear so that I don't get any comments down below saying, you said all these things like this. As of right now, a $1,400 fourth stimulus check or any stimulus check in the amount of any dollar amount has not been approved as of right now. But again, I think we all know this, but I think many people here in the community are just wondering, what's going on? Is there likelihood of anything like this happening? Are we possibly going to get something? What are the details on this? So again, nothing has been approved yet, but let's talk through the details and where we currently stand. And again, what I'm watching very closely right now. All right, so I wanna make this very clear. When it comes down to a fourth stimulus check or any types of money, checks, benefit increases, things like this, for the most part, it all comes down to the economy. All right, now here's the deal. When it comes down to fixed income benefits like Social Security, SSD, retirement, survivors, SSI, things like this. Now, obviously, there's a lot of other bills, packages, and proposals floating around in Congress to potentially raise these benefits up to reform the programs. That is all completely separate, and that is all completely different than stimulus checks. They're all very, very different. However, when it comes down to distributing more money to the people in the form of stimulus checks, economic uh, impact payments, um, inflationary relief checks, whatever we want to call them, they're all essentially the exact same thing. Basically, just like a lump sum check like we received back in early 2020, late 2020, and early 2021. We call them stimulus checks, but they had a bunch of different names. When it comes down to those, there's a few things we need to look at. Basically, the economy, okay? I know we don't want to make this into a big economic lesson, but at the end of the day, that is what it comes down to. It literally does not matter how many of these videos I make. doesn't matter how many letters I write to Congress. It doesn't matter how many phone calls we send, how many voicemails we leave, or how many emails we write to them. At the end of the day, it's about the economy, okay? And again, here, I'm just giving it to you straight, giving it to you uh, all the details as far as everything we need to understand about this because this is what it comes down to, the economy. Super boring stuff, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, let's just be real for a second, okay? <laughs> it's not that exciting. But at the end of the day, this is when it comes down to when they determine the likelihood and how much another check would actually be, okay? So even though we want to reach out to them and ask them, hey, can we please get some help right now? You know what I mean? They kind of 
turn their head and they think, okay, well, just, you know, come back when the economy's, you know, going down the tubes. It's basically what they think, okay? So let me talk about a couple things here that I'm watching very closely. Now, I do want to make this video relatively quick here. I don't want to sit here and hold you for the next, you know, 20 minutes or something like, something like that. So I'm not going to go into great detail on all of these, but I will brush along a bunch of the different topics that I'm watching very, very closely right now, because these, in my honest opinion, are the reasons that we would potentially get another stimulus check. All right, so when it comes down to it, the economy, the health of the economy, okay? So right now, based on the economic numbers, it looks like the economy is still relatively strong. However, is a strong economy right now a good thing? Well, it depends. Generally, a strong economy is a good thing, right? We would look at the economy and think, wow, the economy's strong, that's a good thing. However, right now, a strong economy is not actually good, okay? Here's why. We're in a time right now that is actually kind of weird, which is good news is actually bad news. Why is that? Is that, being, is that me being a pessimist? No, it's actually me being realistic. Here's why. Because good news in the economy, as in low uh, unemployment, a lot of people getting jobs, you know, healthy uh, growth in the economy, strong economic numbers, uh, increasing wages, all things like this. What does this mean to the Federal Reserve? Remember, the Federal Reserve, the central bank, um, and the chairman of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, what it all means to them is simply inflation is too high. Inflation is not going to come down with a strong economy. We've got to tighten the grips a little bit further and raise interest rates even further. So that is why I'm saying good news is actually bad news. When good news comes out on the economy right now, as in good, strong economic numbers, it literally just gives the Federal Reserve even more runway to continue raising interest rates more aggressively. That's why I'm saying that, because we know right now inflation is still very high, right? So inflation, in fact, was actually peaked out in the summer of last year, 9.1% in June of last year, 2022. It has gone down for several months, but now it plateaued and it's actually going back up, okay? Inflation is rising yet again, not good. It's uh, completely opposite of what the Federal Reserve wants. So this is giving us indication that the Federal Reserve will likely continue to raise interest rates probably through the majority of 2023, this year, right? We've already had a couple meetings out of the Federal Reserve and they've continuously raised interest rates. They might get more aggressive on that. Now, why does all this matter? It matters because as the, inter uh, as the Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates, it's just going to tighten the grips on the economy even further, and of course, the American people and the consumer. Let me ask you, do you have any balances floating on credit cards right now? That is the most common one. The average interest rate on a credit card right now is just under 20%. That's up about 3.5% of what it was a year ago. Craziness, right? At the beginning of 2022, the average interest rate on a credit card was a little over 16%. Now we're pushing nearly 20%. That's very high, right? That makes it very hard for consumers right now to pay all those credit card, um, you know, the debt on credit cards. It's very hard to pay that off, paying a 20% interest rate, okay? So that is something we've got to watch. Next, consumer debt is racking up very, very fast right now. We're over a trillion dollars in credit card debt right now. That is a record when it comes down to uh, credit card debt. And even consumer debt here in this country as is at the highest level that we've seen since 2008 the height of the great financial crisis right before the whole thing kind of unraveled back in 2008, right? Remember 2008, 2009? It was an ugly situation. A lot of people were losing their jobs. Uh, unemployment rate was going up high. Um, you know, everything was collapsing. The housing market, the stock market, a lot of things were collapsing, which by the way, that also accompanied stimulus checks. There were stimulus checks that were approved as a result of that, if you remember back to that. And again, I've talked about that before in other videos. Next, let's quickly talk about unemployment because I just alluded to that a second ago. Here's the thing. Unemployment rate has been very, very low. In fact, his, well, not historic lows, but necessarily these are the lowest uh, readings on unemployment that we've seen since the late 60s, okay? It's a very long time ago. Is that good? Depends how you look at it. It's great because, wow, uh, we have very low un uh, unemployment. A lot of people are working. Great thing, right? However, again, good news is bad news right now. The Federal Reserve looks at that and thinks, uh-oh, this is way too strong. Wages are too high. The economy is way too strong. There's way too much demand in uh, in the economy right now for workers, things like this. We got to slow this thing down. So it means that it's going to give the Federal Reserve even more wiggle room to continuously aggressively raising interest rates. So when it comes down to it, long story short, a couple things I'm watching. 
Federal Reserve and their aggressive interest rate policies. What are they going to continue doing? Because they will continue to raise interest rates, which will ultimately come back on the economy. And it's ultimately going to put the grips on the consumers, us, the people, especially anybody of us uh, that are floating balances on credit cards or have any type of um, adjustable interest rates on anything that we're having right now, like maybe a mortgage, auto loans, student loans, credit cards, personal loans, lines of credit, literally anything like that. Uh, if it has an adjustable interest rate or if we're locking it in now, it's going to have a significantly higher interest rate than what it did um, a few months ago, six months ago, a year ago, a year and a half ago, significantly higher. So that is very important. We've got to watch inflation. Inflation is a key, key metric right now as that is uh, kind of dominating the headlines, right? You've seen it all over the place. We've talked about inflation a number of times here over the last year and a half. That's a very, very strong factor right now. We've got to continue watching because we know if inflation does not come down rapidly and fall within the parameters of what the Federal Reserve wants of about two to two and a half percent, which is their benchmark, then guess what? They're going to continue raising interest rates aggressively until they achieve the goal. Well, guess what? That's also going to collapse the economy in a major way. But is that a bad thing? Remember this much as well. I've said this before in other videos. So let me say it again. A recession, a lot of people look at a recession and think, oh my, the sky is falling. A recession is here. I like to look at a recession as a, a reset, a great reset, okay? Now again, a recession means many different things for everybody. But here's what I want to encourage you to look at it as. A reset. Here's the thing. If we do get a major recession in this in this economy in the United States, it's going to bring this inflation down. And that would be a good thing because are you excited about paying higher prices on groceries and you know food, literally everything? Does that excite you? I'm going to say this much. It does not excite me. I'm, in fact, it annoys me to like no end. Every single time we go to the grocery store or whatever, the bill is higher and higher and higher. And honestly, I'm super sick of it. It is so annoying paying more and more literally every single week for the same old things every single week. It just makes me think, geez, I should have used all that extra money and bought a big freezer, you know, put it somewhere in the house or somewhere and then just load it up. And then I would have been better off loading that thing up a year ago and paying lower prices, significantly lower prices than what we're paying today. You know what I mean? It's just so incredibly annoying. So that's what it's coming down to. And again, it all comes down to inflation, the Federal Reserve, and of course, what they're doing with their interest rate policies. Next, like I said, the unemployment rate, we got to watch that one very closely. The lower it gets, the more that it encourages the Federal Reserve to aggressively raise interest rates, okay? So we got to watch all this stuff closely. However, it does seem a little bit interesting that as of recently, we've seen a ton of uh, huge corporations huge, huge employers laying off thousands or tens of thousands of employees all at one time. And we continue to see the unemployment rate going down or holding steady. Does that make sense? I'm not really sure. Something about that seems a little fishy to me. I'm just saying, I'm not really sure about that, but it seems super weird that it seems like almost every day or at least a couple times a week, we're getting announcements out of huge, huge corporations laying off thousands upon thousands of people. And yet we continue to see the unemployment rate dropping. I don't know. Something about that just seems really, really weird and unrealistic based on that. If large corporations are letting go thousands and thousands or tens of thousands of people, what is it? What's going on on the medium businesses, the small businesses that we don't hear about in the headlines? I'm guessing they're letting people go as well, right? Because they got to cut costs getting uh, ready for a major recession that many of these companies are actually, you know, um, kind of preparing for. So again, long story short, when it comes down to it, it's the economy. In the event the economy falls into a deep recession or even worse or whatever happens, if we see a significant economic contraction in the United States, we're also probably going to see stimulus checks, okay? But here's the thing. Let me preface that by saying this much. We'll have to see how deep this recession goes. If it's pretty big and deep, then the likelihood of stimulus checks gets greater and greater. If we just dip in like all right, we walk up to a pool, right? You dip your toe in and say, oh, wow, that's pretty cold. I think I'm going to stay out today. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it's the same thing, if we if the economy just dips into a recession, like we dip our toe into a pool to test the temperature, then we're probably not going to see stimulus checks. But it's all going to be, be uh, based on and predicated by kind of the severity of a recession or like I say, a reset in the economy. The greater the, res uh, the greater the severity of it, the higher the likelihood of checks going out because that is what they do to revitalize the economy and bring it back. They send it out in the form of checks to us, the American people, and they instruct us to spend that money. Hey, everybody, here's a thousand dollars. Go spend it for us, please. That's exactly what they do. Um, so 
I'm gonna leave it there for now, otherwise this video is gonna to get too long. So I hope this kind of answers the questions. And again, I hope this did not turn into a major uh, economic lesson, but at the end of the day, I hope this gives you a better perspective on what I'm watching right now, what is so incredibly important uh, that's going on right now, and again, what would actually predicate the likelihood of another check going out. Now, let me say this much one more time, or really fast here, I, I guess I didn't answer this for you in the video, but let me just say this really quickly. In the event of another check, would all the SSDI, you know, Social Security, uh, retirement, survivors, SSI, VA, RRB, low income, no income, seniors, older adults, people with disabilities, would all of these groups be included for another check? Now, obviously, I cannot promise anything because I have no clue what Congress is going to do, but here's the thing. You've been included for every other check in the past, so there'd be no reason, in my honest opinion, why you would be left out this time. Again, I would anticipate if there's another check, you're probably going to be included. There's no reason that you wouldn't be. There's no way that Congress is gonna come forward and say, everybody gets a check except for fixed income. There's just no way that Congress would do that. All fixed income beneficiaries or the vast majority were included in 2020, uh, late 2020, and again in early 2021. When those three checks went out, there'd be no reason why that wouldn't be the case again in the event of another one. So I hope that answers the question. Again, hope this one helps you out. I hear, I'm hear i here for you in any way that I can be. I just want to break this all down for you, let you know the details of what I'm watching closely. And again, uh, kind of breaking this down for you and giving the latest updates on where we currently stand, what's happening out there. It's a busy time. Things are changing rapidly. I'm very curious to see what happens through the rest of this year as you know, all the people are saying it's going to be an ugly one. Will it really? Well, only time will tell. We don't know that yet until we go through it, until we actually see what happens. But again, I'll be right here for you, bringing you the daily updates and letting you know what's going on and anything out there you can possibly grab. So again, please subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Share the video with your friends, family, social media, and go back and check out any of the other thousands of videos here on the channel. Until next time, enjoy your day. Have a good one. Take care, and I'll catch you again later.